Hello and welcome to WP Forms. Today I'm going to show you how to allow users to submit their own calendar events to your WordPress site by using the WP Forms plugin. Letting users submit their own events is a huge time saver for you and can be super helpful for community websites by making it easy to advertise community events, business conferences, concerts and festivals, webinars, and more. With that said, let's get started. After logging into your WordPress site, We'll first go to the Plugins page and install WP Forms to your site. If you haven't done so already, you can download the plugin from the Downloads tab in your WP Forms account area. If you don't have a WP Forms account, you can go to wpforms.com forward slash YouTube to get 50% off your purchase. We can head back to our WordPress site, and on the Plugins page, we'll click on the Add New button on the top left corner, and then click on the Upload Plugin button. We'll then choose our file, select WP Forms, and activate it once it's done installing. Afterwards, we'll need to verify your copy of WP Forms by entering the license key in the settings page of WP Forms. You can find the key on the downloads page of your WP Forms account, and once the license key has been verified, we can get to work. The very first thing we'll want to do before we create our form is make sure that the post submissions add-on is installed and activated. So we'll want to go over to the left sidebar and under WP Forms, we're going to click on the Add-ons tab. On the Add-ons page, let's scroll until we find the Post Submissions add-on, click on the Install button, and wait for the status to read as active. We're then going to go back to the Plugins page and click on the Add New button, and we're going to search for our second plugin, Events Calendar. We'll search for it, and then install and activate it once we found it. Once that's done, we're ready to head into the form builder by going to WP Forms over on the left and clicking on the Add New option. WP Forms comes with several different form templates to get you up and running as quickly and easily as possible, or you can create a brand new form entirely from scratch if you prefer. For this tutorial, let's go ahead and just start with our simple contact form template, which you can rename if you'd like by filling in the text field at the top of the page. When the template is finished loading into the builder, you can see that it comes with a few default fields. You can go ahead and customize the template as you see fit by either adding new fields by clicking and dragging them from the left panel over to the right panel, or deleting existing fields by hovering over them and clicking on the red trash can icon when it appears. For this form, we're going to go ahead and add a few fields. We're going to add a single line text field, two date and time fields, a file upload field, and a paragraph text field. Let's then go through each field and customize it for our form, starting with the single line text field. We're going to use this field to allow users to enter the title of the event, so I'm going to update the label to Event Title and make this a required field by checking the required box. We're then going to click on the first of our date and time fields, and we're going to have it be the start date of the event, and we're going to make it required as well. We'll then repeat the process for the next date and time field, except this one will be called end date. Next, we'll rename our file upload field and call it promotional image so that users will have the option to include an image to better promote the event they'll be submitting. And finally, we'll update the label for the paragraph text field and call it description so that users can submit more details about the event. Once you're done, click on the save button on the top right corner and we're ready to move on to our next step. But you're probably wondering how this is all going to work. The Events Calendar plugin will create a custom post type called Events that will appear in your WordPress dashboard. Custom post types work the same way that regular posts and pages do. You can send information submitted from your forms to these event posts, and those posts will remain separate from the regular posts and pages on your site. You can actually preview the calendar that's created after installing the Events Calendar plugin by typing in your site's URL in the address bar and following it with forward slash events. This will then show you all of the upcoming events that have been approved, but obviously there won't be much information to show right now since we're just getting started. With that said though, let's move on to our next step, which is connecting our form to the event calendar. Click on the Settings tab on the left and we'll go to the Post Submissions tab. Make sure that Post Submissions is on, otherwise, any entry submitted to this form will not post. In the drop-down, Post Title, you'll be able to select the Event Title field. 
you'll select the description field for the post content dropdown and the promotional image field for the post featured image dropdown. We're also going to set the post type to events and we'll set the post status to pending review so that you can approve each submission and event description before it goes live on your site. We're then going to scroll down to the custom meta section. This last part will require us to add just a little bit of code. This will connect the start and end time fields in your form to the start and end time fields in the calendar. For these specific fields, we're going to use the following code in the first empty text box. Underscore event start date and we're going to select the start time field from the drop down to the right. We're then going to click on the blue plus icon to add a new field. Repeat this in the next box below where we'll write underscore event end date and then select the end time field. This next step is totally optional, but you do also have the option of publishing submitted events as soon as someone submits the form. That way you don't need to manually review and approve them. They'll just appear instantly after the form has been submitted. To do this, you'll go back to the post status dropdown and change it from pending review to published and in the custom post meta section, we'll add two more custom fields and we'll add in the following codes. Underscore event start date UTC and map that to our start time field and then underscore event end date UTC and map that to the end time field. These custom post meta fields are handy for all kinds of customizations. You can look up any other custom meta code you may want to use for different forms on the events calendar website. And you can also check out our guide to using custom fields on user submitted posts. Both links will be listed in the description below this video. Now that the heavy lifting's done, we'll save our progress and we're ready to set up our form's notification and confirmation settings. We'll go ahead and click on the notifications tab. The admin email in the send to email address field refers to the admin email address for your WordPress website. So if you'd like the notification to go to a different email address, you can make that change in this field here. You can also set it up so that the user will receive a copy of this notification email as a sort of confirmation that their form was sent. To do this, you'll simply use the smart tag that belongs to the email field in your form. You can click on the show smart tags text on the top right corner of this field and then click on the option that says email. You'll then see the smart tag that corresponds to the email field in your form. Just be sure to separate each smart tag or manually entered email address with a comma. Next, you can customize the subject line for the notification email as well as the name the email will say it's from. You can enter an email address in the reply to field if you would like for users to be able to reply to this email. Finally, in the message portion, you can include a custom message if you'd like, or you can leave it blank. The all field smart tag that appears by default just means that the message portion of this email will contain all of the filled in fields that the user submitted in your form. Once these settings are configured, let's set up our confirmation settings. You can choose between three different options that the user will see after they've submitted the form. Message, show page, or go to URL. The message option will display any message that you write in this available text field. The show page option allows you to select an existing page on your site like a thank you page or something similar that will be displayed after the user clicks on the submit button. And the go to URL setting will redirect a user to a different website entirely. We'll stay with the default message option for now. Once we're done, we're going to save our changes and we're ready to add our event form to our site. Go to your dashboard and click on pages, add new, and let's add a title. From there, you can click on the plus icon below the title and either click on the Browse All option to find WP Forms, or you can type WP Forms in the available search bar. We'll then click on our event form, hit Publish, and we're all set. But first, let's take a test drive and submit a filled out form to see what our new event will look like. Once the form is submitted, let's go to our dashboard, go to the Events tab, and we'll see that any events that are submitted through our event form will be listed as pending, so they'll appear on your site as soon as you approve them. Let's go ahead and approve the post, and then we'll go to the events page on our site by entering our site's URL followed by forward slash events. We can then see the events calendar, and if we hover above the event, we'll see a small preview pop up. 
click on it to view the full event page with a complete listing. And there you have it! You now know how to allow users to submit calendar events to your WordPress site by using the WP Forms plugin. If you have any questions or concerns, please be sure to visit WPForms.com and check out our documentation page, which has step-by-step -step written instructions for all of our features and add-ons. If you need any extra technical help, please go to our contact page and reach out to our support team. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed and found this video helpful, subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you can learn more about building smarter forms with WP Forms through our how-to videos and more.